Okay, one thing we can do with plants is we can actually try to extract the photosynthetic pigments that are in there. And you might be thinking chlorophyll is the main one, but actually there's a bunch of different types. There's actually two different forms of chlorophyll. There's other things like carotene and xanthophyll, depending on the type of plants that you're actually looking at. So one way that you can use to actually uh, extract these and figure out what's actually in there is using a technique called chromatography. So we're separating photosynthetic pigments here. So you're gonna take your leaf, you're gonna shred it, you're gonna grind it all up, and you're gonna use sand to help to really use some surface area to really break apart the cells. You're going to use propanone, which is one type of solvent. You can use different types of solvents, and if you search online for different types of techniques, uh, lots of different solvents are suggested. Ethanol is used as well, too. And you have to keep in mind, though, that the you have to keep track of the type of actual solvent you're actually using and even the concentration of the solvent because it can affect uh, how far these particular pigments get dissolved in it and therefore how far these dots are going to move when we try to calculate a little bit later. Uh, you're going to transfer the extract to a watch glass. You're going to evaporate off any of the extra liquid that's there. Eventually what you're trying to do is you're really trying to concentrate as much of this pigment as possible. You're going to add a few more drops of fresh propanone in to actually dissolve the pigments and then you're going to take some paper and then you're going to build a concentrated spot so you could use a pinhead the back of a pinhead you could use a really thin capillary tube and you're going to basically put little spots here you're going to mark a line and then you're going to put little spots and then you're going to let it dry then you're going to keep dabbing it you don't want it to spread out too much you want it to be as much of that concentrated solution as possible in a little in a little spot of two or three dabs is probably enough and then you're going to transfer it into a little container that looks something like this and there will be a solvent that you're going to put at the bottom and because you're using this particular paper and this paper contains cellulose this liquid is actually going to move up through the tissue and as it moves up through the tissue and hits the little dots it's going to start spreading out the pigment depending on the type of stuff that's in whatever solution you've created uh, some of those things will dissolve a little bit better some of them will dissolve a little bit less better and those things that dissolve really well are going to travel really far with the solvent as it starts moving up those things that don't dissolve as well will travel a little bit less and so you're gonna get this kind of cool separation of chemicals that's going on in here it's a very kind of uh, primitive looking technique but this is one of the techniques that helped us to basically figure out the products of photosynthesis and the Calvin experiments and in all kinds of other experiments from before it's still a very useful technique Technique to find out what types of different substances can be found inside a solution. So after you're all done, what you can do is you can finish all of this off. Now, you don't want the solvent to go all the way up to the top, then everything starts dripping back down the side. And so what you want to do is you want to stop the entire thing when you see that the solvent has almost reached to the top. And then that's basically it. All that's left is a little bit of calculation. So you'll be able to see little spots and sometimes you'll be able to see different colors depending on the color of the pigment that was in the actual leaf. And you're gonna calculate something called the RF value. And the RF value, it's a very simple calculation. You're gonna pick one particular spot and you're gonna divide the distance the spot actually moved from the line. So if you, this is starting point, you're gonna measure from here to the dot if you can see my cursor over here, I'm talking about from the starting point to this little green dot. And then you're going to divide that by the total distance that was moved by the solvent. So the total distance moved by the solvent was from the actual line all the way up to the solvent front. And just by doing a simple ratio like that, you're going to get a number, an RF value. So this might be, I don't know, if this whole distance was 10 centimeters and this thing only moved 8 centimeters, then you'd have an RF value of 0 0.8. You can look up these RF values, can compare them to literature values that are published to help you identify what the actual substance, what the actual pigment is in this particular case. Now, keep in mind, I did mention at the very beginning, a lot of this depends on the actual solvent that you're using and the type of leaf that you're using as well too. So make sure you keep track of everything that you're using, the type of solvent, uh, why that solvent was chosen for that particular leaf. If there's a concentration for the solvent, keep a record of that as well too, because that'll give you some idea of how to actually compare your literature values. And then when you look it up, hopefully you'll be able to identify the type of photosynthetic pigment that was in your leaf that you just totally destroyed.